Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to take a look at this, the Udo X86 Advanced Plus single board computer which has been sent to me for review by my friends at Udo. Now, as the name of the board implies, this is an x86 based computer, a Celeron based computer to be specific. And this means it can run pretty much any mainstream distribution of Linux, and it can run Android, and it can run Windows. So you've got a lot of possibilities with this board. And you've also got a lot of connectivity, as, as you will see. And to test this out and to test out all its expansion options, they've not just sent me from Udo this computer, they've sent me all of these peripherals. So let's go and take a closer look. Right, here we have the Udo X86 Advanced Plus and it's rather a wacky box. So uh, let's get inside. I think we just pull it up. Uh, we do, yes, it gets in like that. Oh, definitely X86. And um, oh, it's all the way around there. And uh, Stanley the knife will just help us out. There we are. And um, we're inside. Let's get rid of the packing over down there. And um, we've got some screws and bolts and things there. And then the board itself with the usual uh, protective thing that we can get in there. And uh, come on, there we are. And crinkle, crinkle. There we have the uh, Udo X86 Advanced Plus. Now, it's probably worth comparing this in terms of its form factor to some other boards, because that's an obvious thing to do. Here we have, for example, a Raspberry Pi 3. You can see it's clearly bigger than the Pi 3. And over here somewhere else, crinkle, crinkle again, we also have a Latte Panda. So you can compare those, those boards. You can see the, the Udo is a bigger single board computer. It's uh, almost twice the size or about this, of, a, of a standard board or almost exactly the same size as a Pi 3 and a Latte Panda put together. Now, before we look at the more specific specs, I think it's worth noting there are four versions of the Udo X86. There is the X86 Advanced Plus that we have here, which is a quad-core Celeron CPU running at 1.6 gigahertz, boosting to a 2.25 gigahertz, four gigabytes of onboard memory, and 32 gigabytes of flash storage. And this board costs $165 plus uh, VAT and taxes and shipping and that type of thing. There's also a board called the Udo X86 Advanced, which is exactly the same as this, but no flash storage, and that is $149. There's then the Udo X86 Basic, which has an Atom CPU rather than the Celeron, 2GB of RAM, no flash, and that is $125. And finally, the Udo X86 Ultra, which is like this, but it has an Intel Pentium processor, 8GB of RAM, and that's $267. But anyway, here we've got Udo X86 Advanced Plus 165. So let's talk you through the board's specifications. As I'm sure you can guess, under the big heatsink here, we have the CPU, the system on a chip. It's an Intel Braswell chip. It's a Celeron N3160. And as I said before, it runs from a 1.6 gigahertz as a base frequency, bursting up to a 2.25 gigahertz. And it has Intel HD Graphics 400. You can see some of the uh, memory chips on top here, giving the four gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, and you can see down here, the chip which gives us a 32 gigabytes of EMC flash. You probably also noticed on the top of the board, we've got some Arduino connectors here and here, so you can hook this up to all those exciting maker things. If we flip the board over, you'll see underneath straight away, we have the uh, battery. We've got a battery for uh, maintaining the real time clock, which is great to have on a single board computer. You can disconnect it if you want to, but you probably don't want to because it's rather handy to have that. We've also got two, count them, two M.2 slots. So we can fit to this board an M.2 wireless module. There's no onboard Wi-Fi or Bluetooth on this board. You can fit them via M.2, and you can fit an M.2 SSD. You've also got in this corner here, as you probably noticed, a slot for an SD card, a micro SD card. You don't have to use that slot, but it's there if you want to. And we've also got here, we've got SATA connector. So you've got a SATA connector on this board as well as a, an M.2 SSD connector, and we've got a SATA power connector on top of that. So you've got lots of connectivity, lots of options on this board. If we flip it back the other way, if we look at the edges of the board, if we look perhaps at the, uh, the back edge first, you can see here we've got an IR receiver. 
We've got a front panel connectors. Yes, front panel connectors on a single board computer, things like switches and LEDs. We've got a connector here for fan power. And as I'm sure you've spotted, we've got two type A USB ports and they're both USB 3, which is clearly very good news. We've also got a TRS jack, 3.5 millimeter jack for audio. And we've also got two speaker headers. Flicking to the other edge of the board, we have got a power connector. In common with many of the large, more powerful single board computer boards, we haven't got a power buyer, the micro USB connector. We've got a proper barrel connector. We've got another USB 3 socket. We've got gigabit ethernet, hurrah. We've got our HDMI connector, but we've also got, as you probably spotted, two mini display port connectors. This board can support up to three 4K displays using these connectors on the board. So there we are, the Udo X86 Advanced Plus single board computer. Although as you might have gathered yourself, and I've certainly gathered while looking around this board, it does have the feel of being a very small desktop motherboard. Right, you might remember that Udo has sent me not just this board to look at, but also a lot of peripherals. Now I've now done loads of unpackaging and have got this uh, Wi-Fi module, this M.2 Wi-Fi module with its associated uh, antenna. I've also got this uh, rather nice Transcend M.2 SSD, a 128 gigabyte SSD, which is going to be a very powerful single board computer. I've got this cooling fan with some screws to fit it with. I've got these two cables, a SATA power cable and a SATA data cable. I've got a power adapter to obviously power the board with. I've got this acrylic case kit. And I've even got this HDMI lead, this Udo branded HDMI lead. I don't think I've seen before a single board computer branded HDMI cable. But we'll now fit these things to the board. And I think I'll start with this, with the uh, M.2 Wi-Fi module, this tiny weeny little thing. So I'll just fit that to the board here. Goes in this M.2 slot. And then we just apply some mounting hardware that came with the board. There we are, that's nice and secure. We need to add now its antenna, which just clip on like this. I'm overjoyed of being able to speed things up while I show you things. We can now put in the uh, M.2 SSD in like this, and again, applying mounting hardware. And uh, there we are. We've now got our M.2 devices, so I can show you that, mounted on the board. Hand tight's absolutely fine now. I should have got a pair of pliers probably, but I didn't. Anyway, with those in place, we can now take the cooling fan and we will fit it on the top of the heatsink. We'd probably get away without using a cooling fan on this uh, computer most of the time anyway, but as we've got one, we will fit it. Slightly wonky, but it's uh, nice and firmly in place. And then finally, we will take the bits of the case and do a rapid case assemble. And uh, there we are. There it is, our uh, fully cased and assembled and generally equipped Udo X86 Advanced single board computer. Right, I've now got the Udo all connected up and running, and I thought I'd start by showing you this, which is where you get, if you press escape multiple times during boot up, you get to this BIOS screen. So I thought I'd show you this because it's so unusual and so nice to have one on a single board computer. So for example, I can go to the boot manager, which obviously shows you how the machine will boot. I've already installed Linux Mint on this system. It's calling it Ubuntu, but it is Linux Mint. And that's installed on the 128 gigabyte M.2 SSD. And I installed that in a normal way of putting Linux Mint on a USB drive and just putting it in, booting from it and installing it to that drive. And you can see here we've actually got two possible places I can install things. I've also got here the uh, internal 32 gigabytes of flash storage. Let's just come out of that. I just want to show you, we've also got the ability to look at all the normal BIOSy things on the, on the Udo, you can see all sitting here. We can see we've definitely got that Celeron processor running at 1.6 gigahertz there, all the RAM is there, etc. And we've got all the normal, some normal things you'd expect. The things you'd normally want to mess around with on a computer, but you can't normally mess around with using a, a single board computer. 
So anyway, I'll discard changes from this and just come out, bringing me back to uh, that screen there. If I press continue, the thing will now boot into Linux Mint. And there we are. We've arrived in a Linux Mint running on the Udo X86 Advanced Plus. And if I just show you the normal kind of Linuxy stuff, it's all there, um, looking just like just like Linux Mint. Let's run up a couple of programs. Uh, Open Office Writer there is a good uh, thing to test out. Loads in nice and quickly, as you can see. This is a nice responsive system. And even something like GIMP, which is uh, generally longer to load, will still load in nice and quickly from that uh, M.2 SSD on this nice responsive system. So you could use this as a PC in all kinds of contexts. This is a very capable board. We'll also um, go to the web, of course, just check the web out, what's going on online. And uh, Hopefully that'll arrive. There we are in uh, Firefox, a default browser here on the Linux Mint. That's explaining computers, of course. And we'll also check out YouTube, because of course it's a good idea to check out YouTube. Check it's still there. And it obviously is. It must still be there, because you're watching me on YouTube at this very moment in time, aren't you? Of course you are. So, um, hopefully, yes, it's loaded in the uh, channel trailer for explaining computers. You know, just bring it up like that. Please take us to HD. Give us a second to catch up. It's not in HD Welcome yet, is it? Come on, give us some proper HD. Here and any hour now, I'd actually get there. Come on, YouTube, you can do it. Oh yes, look, I think it's finally realised it can show HD. It was just flicking between streams, of course. Oh dear, we were looking at Linux Mint inside Linux Mint. What a very strange thing that was. So that's getting too strange. We'll have to stop doing that. So. Um, how do I come out of this? There we are, we're out of that again. I'm getting far too confused. So uh, there we are. Me talking to me talking to me is just uh, too confusing. But uh, as I think you've seen here, Linux Mint runs very nicely on the Udo X86 Advanced Plus. Right, I just wanted to show you pushing this thing a little bit further. So for start, I have loaded in uh, Caden Live or installed Caden Live. And this works perfectly well, and we can play uh, video clips and things, which works pretty well actually on, on this machine. You could certainly use this for uh, basic video editing. I'm doing this in the 720p, it's playing perfectly well, and uh, it works. You couldn't do fantastically complicated video editing, but it does work. Um, what else I've done also is to connect in another monitor. So if I flick to this view here, you can see I've got two monitors connected. Uh, uh, the other one is a 5.4 monitor, just because it's what I had available. I could actually make work with the system and record it, if by pointing a camera at it. But as you can see, I can drag across and do things on uh, different monitors, which is uh, rather good. So I could uh, pull up over there. I think I've got a video file, which I can uh, have over there. And I could also have over here Caden Live again. And in theory, I could go over there and uh, play that video file. If I go and hit the right button, there we are. Play that video file, there we are, that's going. And I could come back to Caden Live and go monitor and uh, I could do a switch to full screen and play that video file as well. So we've now got video files playing on two monitors. I never before had a single board computer playing two videos at the same time. I really like the Udo X86 Advanced Plus single board computer. Given its price point, it's not a direct competitor to a board like a Raspberry Pi, it's in a sort of higher price bracket, but you've got so many possibilities with a board. Not least as, as we've seen, you can boot it from an SD card, you can boot it from the onboard flash memory, you can boot it from USB 3, you can boot it from the SATA port, you can boot it from the M.2 SSD. That alone makes this board stand out with all those options if you need a small computer to do all kinds of different things. Now, of course, some of you will be saying to me, Chris, run some benchmarks. I am going to run some benchmarks, but what I'm going to do is to do another video where I compare the Udo X86 Advance Plus against the Enhanced Latte Panda, because they're both X86-based boards. They seem to be good boards to pit against each other. So that'll be coming up in a future video. But now that's it for this time. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.